Good morning and happy Sabbath church. Good morning. We want to welcome each one of you for our divine worship this morning. And a special welcome to all the guests and visitors. If there's any one here that's visiting this church for the first time, I'd like to invite you to please stand. At this time, the church has a special memento to give you this morning. So please remain standing. And also a special welcome goes to the family of Pastor Udru for being with us this morning. We want to welcome you as well. Okay, also as the tradition has been at this church, at this time I invite each one of you to please get up off your seats, go and say hello to the members here, and let's, we are a small church, so let's wish each other happy Saturday. on June 15 from 6 to 9 p.m. The address is 15100 Lee Highway, Centerville, Virginia 20210. You can also visit them at the website www.sams.fm. To begin our divine service this morning, shall we all rise and sing since Jesus came.
from the scriptures, book of Ezekiel, chapter 16. Verse 4 to 9. We're going to do a responsive reading. Um, do all of you have your Bibles open? Okay. All right. I think it's printed in the program sheet. Yes, it is. All right. If you're ready. And as for thy nativity, in the day thou was born, thy navel was not cut. Neither was thou washed in water to suck thee. Thou was not salted at all, nor swaddled at all. None I pity thee to do any of thee unto thee, to have compassion upon thee. But thou was cast out in the open field to the loathing of thy person in the day that was born. And when I passed by thee, and saw thee polluted in thine own blood, I said unto thee, When thou wast in thy blood, live. A, I said unto thee, When thou wast in thy blood, live. I have caused thee to multiply as the blood of the field, and thou hast increased and waxen great, and thou art come to excellent ornaments. Thy breasts are furnished, and thy hair is whereas thou was naked and bare. Now when I passed by thee, I looked upon thee. Behold, thy time was the time of love. And I spread my skirt over thee, and covered thy nakedness. Yeah. I swear unto thee, and entered into a covenant with thee, said the Lord God, and thou became as mine. Then washed I thee with water, yea, I thoroughly washed the with thy blood from thee, and I anointed thee with oil. May the Lord add his blessing to the portion of scripture that was read. I invite the church to kneel as far as possible as we seek the Lord in prayer. Our merciful Father in heaven, we thy children gather here on this Sabbath morning to worship you and to praise you through our singing. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that we have received individually during this past week. Lord, you have protected us in our travels and our journeys. You were with us during difficult times. And you have given us the Sabbath day to come and rest and to worship you. And that we do today, bringing praises and glory to your name. Lord, there are some of us who could not make it here this morning for various reasons that you are aware of. We bring them to your presence this morning. We also pray for those that are sick in the hospitals at home or wherever they may be. We ask that your presence be with them, stretch forth your healing hand, touch them and restore them back to normal health. Lord, there are those in our community that have lost their loved ones. We pray for the bereaved family. Draw close to them. Give them strength. Comfort them. And we thank you, Lord, for the hope that you have given us that you will come again soon when we will see all our loved ones that have gone before us. And may our lives on the earth till the day you come be acceptable so that we can all be caught up with our loved ones to go home with you for eternity. This morning we bring all of the concerns and the cares of this church family. Whatever they may be, Lord, we bring them to your feet. You know those who need you most. Draw close to them. We also bring to your presence this morning the speaker for this morning, Pastor 
Anand Ram Undru. We pray, Lord, that you will touch him. We thank you for his ministry. As he will bring the word to us this morning, may it come from your throne of grace. May each one of us be touched and go from here renewed in our spirit. We pray that you will forgive us, Lord, of all our sins and shortcomings. Finally, when you come in the clouds of heaven, may it be a privilege for each one of us to go home with you for these blessings. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
here as a pastor for 37 years and won many souls for Christ. He has walked all over in little villages and preaching to all the people. And today, I'm here to let you know that he took care of three of us sisters, all our grandchildren, uh, grand, his grandchildren, and one granddaughter who he adores. I can go on and on to let you know what my dad is exactly. He's a very caring person, but I will let you have the first-hand experience to his ministry.
meditating upon. <clears throat> the picture is what she read from Ezekiel 16 chapter uh, 4 to 9. The picture is not very, um, uh, very pleasing because this child that was born was not taken care of and it was thrown in the field. This picture is not so um, pleasing to, but great lessons we can learn from this uh, account in uh, Ezekiel 16, chapter, first few verses. Decent, hard-working people have to continue to struggle against a crime wave. Too many gangs, too many drug dealers, too many drive-by shootings, too much poverty in the world today, yet among the most dangerous streets in a certain city of this country, um, a miracle took place. Two people's lives were changed forever by one man's act of selflessness. It happened in a, an apartment building in that city on the edge of a Korean city, Korean town. Just a few yards from this apartment building, many homicides have happened. In 1981, a man named Leon Graves made his home here. He worked long hours each day at a wholesale fish market. He also helped manage the apartment building to supplement his uh, meager income. One afternoon, a neighbor knocked on his door. The woman complained that she and her husband had not been able to sleep for two or three nights. They kept hearing what sounded like a baby crying next door. Mr. Graves got a key to the apartment. He opened the door and stepped inside. He would never forget what he saw on the living room floor. It was a baby boy wailing his heart out of wailing his heart out. The child was very sick. His eyes appeared to have sucked into his head. A piece of paper lay beside the infant. Graves picked it up. It was uh, a birth certificate. Uh, the baby's name was Roy. Graves rushed the tiny Roy, uh, rushed tiny Roy to children's hospital. Doctors told him the child would not have survived another three hours. Two weeks later, Graves got a call from the hospital. Would he be able to take the baby home temporarily? On one, uh, no one had been able to locate any relative. Graves brought Roy home and he realized he had to make a big decision. What was he going to do with the seven-month-old child? He decided to ask God about it and began praying for guidance. There were many reasons for Leon Graves to bow out at this point. Baby Roy was not his problem. Someone else had abandoned the child. Further, furthermore, Graves was 55 and single. He had to get up 2 a.m. at 2 a.m. each morning 
to go to work at the uh, fish market. How could he possibly play father to an, inf to an infant at this stage in his life? And there was more. Leon Graves was an American. Roy was a Korean. His full name on the birth certificate was Roy Day Yon Chang. Animosity between Americans and the Korean Americans had been building up for years. There had been violent confrontations between Korean store owners and uh, American customers. Again, it would have been very easy for Graves to think a little, think of little Roy as someone else's problem, but he some, but he, someone else's problem, but he could not. So he kept praying. And God seemed to be saying, this burden you take care of. Graves had heard horror stories about children in the foster care. He believed Roy would never get to love the love he needed in the system. So Leon Graves made a decision. He would give the child a home. He hired a babysitter. He hurried home from work each day to relieve her and care for the boy himself. He stayed close to the Korean town so the boy would be able to retain his Korean identity. He learned to prepare Korean food, dish, Korean food dishes he first tasted as a soldier in the Korean War. He began to take the boy to Korean church. In time, Leon Graves would become Roy's legal guardian. In this world, tragedies take place. Children are neglected or abused. People don't hold together. People don't find center, a center. Their lives don't hold together. The real problem, missing ingredient, is love. So many individuals feel a sense of abandonment. They have not experienced the love and acceptance that gives us a center to hold on to. And the question is, uh, can people find a rescuer like Ian Graves who shows them what love is all about? The story of Leon and Roy gives us a compelling picture of how each of us really can. As we will see, it demonstrates that divine love uh, can indeed uh, rescue us from abandonment. Members of the Korean church that Graves attended with Roy each week often went for a, went to a park for picnics after services. They enjoyed a lot of fellowship at those picnics in the park. The whole church seemed to love little Roy and he began to blossom. Roy was a shy kid, but now he grew confident and friendly. In this environment, Roy also heard about a father in heaven who loved him infinitely. He heard about a God who had gone to extraordinary lengths to demonstrate that love. There is a remarkable portrait of God's love in the book of Ezekiel 16, 4 and 5. And as for thy nativity, in the day thou wast born, thy navel was not cut, neither was thou washed in water to supple thee. 
Thou wast not salted at all, nor swaddled at all. Fifth verse. None I pitied, pitied thee to do any of these unto thee, to have compassion upon, to have compassion, um, compassion upon thee. But thou wast cast out in the open field to the loathing of thy person in the day that thou wast born. This picture is not very important. Everybody uh, hated and the child was neglected, the first born, the born child. God deals with our abandonment. Why didn't I get the love I needed? Take a look at verse 6, 8 and 9. And when I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thy own blood, I said unto thee, when thou wast in thy blood, live, yea. I said unto thee, when thou wast in thy blood, live. I have uh, eight and nine verses. Now when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love. And I spread my skirt over thee and cover, the, cover thy nakedness, yea, I swear unto thee, and enter into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord God of Lord God, and thou becamest mine. Ninth verse, then washed I thee in water, yea, through thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee. And I anointed thee with oil. That's God's love. And he was neglected, abandoned, and God will do that to this neglected child that represents us, the followers of Christ. God wants to rescue those that are abandoned, just like Leon Graves rescued joy. God wants to spread his wing over us he wants to adopt us as his own. He wants to wash away our messy, painful past. He wants to anoint us with oil of his tender care. Ezekiel's powerful and passionate words give us a glimpse into the uh, heart of God. How do these words become real in our lives? How does that love become real? Let us go back to the story of Leon Graves and Roy. Roy was helpless, in helpless infant uh, when Graves took him in. He would not grasp the concept of love. But that baby absorbed that love as soon as Roy uh, could take a few steps. He began to follow Graves around everywhere. As soon as Graves came home, there was his little boy waiting. Little Roy wanted to follow everywhere Graves went. People, uh, people in that neighborhood frequently saw this tall man with a Korean boy riding on his shoulders. Some raised their eyebrows, but the pair remained inseparable. They enjoyed each other's company. Those who experience abandonment uh, don't know how to really receive love and to really love back. They feel handicapped because they were abandoned. If we just give time, God God's love will sink in. That's a wonderful thing. Give time and His love will sink in. If we spend time in His presence, that love will eventually get through. We cannot remain fixed on the hurts of the past. We have to invest our emotions in the pictures of God. 
that the Bible gives us. In the words of affection that God says to us, Ezekiel 16 is one great picture. It shows how God longs to nurture us with his love. Just like Leon Graves <coughs> nurtured Roy, look how the description of God's treatment of an orphan girl that he rescues. I will read Ezekiel 16, 10, 13, and 14. I clothed thee also with broidered work, and shod thee with badger skin, and I girded thee about with fine linen, and I covered thee with silk. Thirteenth verse, Thus was thou decked with gold and silver, and thy raiment was of fine linen and silk and broidered work. Thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil, and thou wast exceeding beautiful, and thou didst prosper into a kingdom. Fourteenth verse, and thy renown went forth among the hidden, for thy beauty, for it was, uh, it was perfect through my comeliness, which I have put upon thee, saith the Lord God. <laughs> this is not an orphan girl who waits for the charity of the people of that house. No, this is a princess. God turns the abandoned infant into a princess. We saw in the first portion of the Bible uh, that was the, this, the born child was neglected, not even washed. But here God changes the situation. He adopts her. She became princess. She is not depending upon the charity of the people of the house. She is princess now, honorable uh, princess. And so, like that, God changes the situation. is to be spared. She is the daughter of a king. Now, she is beautiful because she reflects the Lord's own splendor. That's what God wants for each of us. This is what God wants for all those who have experienced abandonment, all those who feel unloved, he wants to make you feel that special. He wants to make you feel that cherished. So please give God time in your life. Let his face come into focus in the present. Let his voice come clear in the present. It can overcome all hateful of the past. There is one more thing we can learn from what happened to Leon, Leon Graves and Roy. It is an important lesson about love. Raising little Roy in a tougher neighborhood is not easy. Graves had to protect Roy from dangerous, dangerous environment had to make a lot of sacrifices. He had to work hard to make ends meet. He had to work long hours just to care for this boy. He basically invested his life in this abandoned child. And that life was reproduced in the heart of the growing child. The love that Graves poured into the 
and boy blossomed and bore fruit. Roy grew up to be a happy, independent young man. Neighbors noticed something very interesting. Leon Graves walked slightly stooped uh, because of an old war injury. Sometimes Roy would subconsciously emulate the old man's posture and walk bent over a bit. Roy didn't realize that he is walking a bit bent. Roy wanted to be like Leon Graves. He wanted to be like the man who meant everything to him. There is a vitally important fact we need to know about the Heavenly Father who rescues us, rescues the abandoned, the Father who washes off the pain of the pain of our past, the Father who dresses us in the finest garments, the Father who turns us into royalty. We need to understand that he made great sacrifices to do this. He made the great test sacrifice in order to pour his life into us. It is important to listen to him, to give God time to let his love sink deep. This is a place where he lived, he loved, his love turns into a spectacle. Romans 5, 6 to 8 says, while we are at sinners, Christ died for us. The place was Calvary. The scene was the crucifixion. The event was the death of the Son of God. The man who did only good in the world. The man who blessed children, healed lepers, and, uh, and who welcomed every outcast. Who being tortured to death. Was, he was suspended by pikes, crowned by thorns, mocked by foes, abandoned by friends. What was Jesus doing at Calvary? He was a, demonstrating God's love for us to rescue humanity. He is willing to go to any length. Do you know where the abandoned find an embrace? They find it at Calvary. They find it where Jesus is stretched out on a cross. That love is found there. That is where we see the extent of God's love for us. In fact, to rescue didn't come cheap. It cost God everything, the blood of Jesus Christ, the New Testament writers proclaim, it is the blood of Christ that cleanses us and washes us and brings us redemption. There is a reason that he can give us a robe of righteousness. It is because a robe was torn from Christ's shoulders. It is because his back was bared and lacerated. It is because he hung on a cross while soldiers gambled his garments. Jesus exposes the full extent of God's love at, his, at the cross. There is a reason the Father uh, can make that abandoned child feel like a beautiful princess, giving her his own splendor. There is a reason he can make each of us a son or daughter of God. It is because he wore a crown of thorns as he was led away to Calvary. It is because he endured abandonment and humiliation in our behalf. Jesus demonstrated the extent of God's love for us. Jesus wanted 
Jesus went to Calvary and loved me with a, with a cross. Do you want to experience God's love deeply? It waits for you at Calvary. Go there and meet it. Go there and embrace it. Go there and accept it. Do you know what happened when this sacrifice for you begins to sink in? You will become like, a, um, like the father who cherishes you. You will adopt his traits, his qualities, just like young Rian and Roy unconsciously began to walk like his father, Leon Graves. He was bent when he was walking because he had a wound in the war against Korea. This boy, young boy, living with him many years and trying to break Kirby, the father, unconsciously, he was walking like his father, bent. Nobody told him, he didn't know that he is walking bent, but it became automatically, because he was living with him and copying all the traits of his father, like that we too. We don't say walk bent, but the father, he will you will experience, you will explore, emulate his characters in your life. In my life too, you want to speak is to me too. Do you know what happens when this sacrifice for you begins to sink in? You will become like the father who cherishes you. You will adapt his truth, his qualities, just like young Roy unconsciously began walking like his father. Leon Graves, he, became, he came to know the extent of a man's love for him. We can know the extent of God's love for us when we open our hearts to Christ's sacrifice. So dear friends, we can learn many good lessons from this, emulating his love, copying his love, in our lives. May God bless each one of you and remember this to imitate his characters in our lives. Amen. Pastor Andra for the wonderful message. At this church, we focus on outreach matters uh, briefly every fourth week. And usually there is a statement reflecting on what we focus. And here's a statement from Billy Graham. The greatest form of praise is the sound of consecrated feet seeking out the lost and helpless. In other words, the lost and helpless will not come seeking after us. We have to do the seeking out. And when you seek out the lost and helpless, they may not be the most loving, lovable people. It may not be the most ideal situation, like in the example of the Samaritan. And so, God's love is portrayed when we go the extra mile. When Jesus died on the cross, it did not happen in a way that was nice and comfortable, and, you know. And so let us be inspired by this thought of showing God's love, just as he showed to us, by going after, going seeking out to the lost and to the helpless. And now I would like to request uh, all of you to support our church in whatever way you can. And uh, I would like to request Shadrach to come and uh, collect the offering.
Our gracious Heavenly Father, you have shown us what true love is. And though we did not deserve it, and though we were not willing to come back to thee, you came after us. And now as we collect this offering, we ask thee to bless it, multiply it, and let the work that this church is engaged in see the fruits of what it means to show the love. Bless all those who have come here and bless them abundantly. For our calls in Jesus' name. Amen.
I want to once again thank the music team, both vocal and instrumental. Your music draws us closer to God. I tried to sing many times, but I don't have the voice, proper voice. And uh, I tried to congregational singing, I can do that, but uh, especially I cannot do. But you are gifted people and with special uh, abilities to play on this and sing. That's what God wants. So you are drawing us closer to God. The God bless you with the leadership of uh, Elder Shava, Elder Anand. God bless him for this wonderful leadership. And for all the relatives who have come around here, to, to, I really enjoyed this Sabbath very much. So pray for me and my relatives also. Now we will pray. Dear Father, thank you for picking me up when I was lying there helpless in my sin. Thank you for loving me when I felt so unworthy, so abandoned. Help me to be able to accept the forgiveness and grace Jesus Christ offers. Help me to accept the love and um, love and um, um, love that pours out from Calvary. Thank you for making the sacrifice on my behalf. Thank you for choosing me. In Jesus' name, Amen. amen. Once again, I would like to invite all of you to the luncheon that will be following after this. We thank the Hundru family for coming and worshiping with us today. You're always welcome to come back to Hope's side. That is hope on your side.